Good morning, Greater St. John. We're here for Sunday school on this Sunday. I hope everyone's having a great day. And I hope this will add to it, physically and spiritually. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to share in your word, to learn your word, to teach your word. I pray, God, that you hide me so that your words come forth to those who are in need. Bless you, God, for giving us your word. It's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Today's topic um, is called the call of Gideon. Uh, the devotional reading comes from 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. And the background scripture is Judges 6, 1 to 27. Now, when we talk about the judges, if you read in the books of Judges, uh, Gideon is uh, the fifth uh, judge of the book of Judges. And this this should be exciting because I think everyone's going to be able to relate to Gideon. And if you read the entire thing, you're going to be able to relate to him and say, that, that's how I felt. That's how I thought. That's, that's, that's where I was at one time in my life. So I think today's lesson will, will hopefully help you see that and see how God brought him out of that. And uh, the reading comes Judges 6, 1, 2, and 7 through 16a. And it reads thusly, the, the Israelites did evil in the sights of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites because the power of the Midian was so oppressive the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain cliffs, caves, and strongholds. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians, and I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down on their oak in a oak for it that belonged to Josh the Abazarite where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when he said, Did not the Lord bring you up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakened in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answers, I will be with you. When we read through that passage, we see that Gideon has a normal uh, reaction to the to, to the question. Now, now, granted, it has been it has been a couple of centuries and years, about two hundred fifty years since they were been brought up out of Egypt, but he still heard heard the tales of uh, the tales, the story of how God rescued his ancestors and all of the Israelites out of Egypt, and now that. They were in the hands of the Midianites. He felt God has abandoned them because he ha he saw no sight, sign or felt no sign of God's love and protection for them. Him. And when people of faith answer God's call, the blessings of unexpected opportunities to serve follow. So this is early when he gets that. But let us go through it. Go through it. It says that the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of Midianites. First of all, I I know seven years uh, doesn't sound as much as those who had gone through eight and eighteen or twenty or even forty years 
of being oppressed uh, by, by a greater clan. And then, but the other instance where the Lord, the afraid is evil in the eyes of the Lord occurs. The evil is idol worship. That's one thing God had told them not to do, not to do. And I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping all of you understand because he wanted to be their own, only one in true God. But they got the worshiping of the gods because the power of the Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountains, cliffs, caves, and strongholds. They just went up in the caves and in the mountains, dug out holes, uh, dug out caves. And so them being up that high, they could see down if people were coming to attack them and it gave them better advantage from up there. But they did that uh, for protection for themselves and for survival. And that's one of the things they did. And then he says, they sent them a prophet who said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. However, some texts do speak of the prophets appearing on the scene in order to warn their audience to, or call them to action. It doesn't name who the prophet is. It just says that they were sent a prophet. And God used both men and women prophets to serve and declare his directives for his people. Now, the phrase land of slavery always shows up in stories about Israel's departure out of, the, out of Egypt. And by the time the events of today's text, as I said before, the exodus was more than 250 years in the past. Generations had come and gone. But uh, the Israelites did not need a reminder of, of what it was, what it was like to be oppressed. They were being oppressed at that time by the Midianites. And rather, the prophet was reminding the people of, of Israel of the one who had delivered their ancestors. Um, as a people, we just need to go back and think, you know, over uh, about 220 years ago that, that we were slaves. And it is, you know, and, and God had a hand, God's hand was in delivering us, us as a race from slavery ourselves. So I think we can identify how uh, they felt at that time. Although they were delivered years ago, we were delivered years ago, there are still some things that are unfair in this society now in 2022 that's because of the color of your skin. So although some things have changed, some things remain the same, and again, well, we should be able to identify with them. And the Israelites ultimately uh, imitated the people they had displaced by engaging in idol worship, which had God re reminding them, I re the prophet reminding them that they, as he said, I rescued you from the land of Egypt and I delivered you from the hand of your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. He was reminding them of what, again, what had been done for their ancestors, what had done for their people. And now they're out there worshiping idols. Now, understand that at the time, there was always people worshiping different things. Uh, our Native Americans, they worship, uh, they have a God or worship for the wind and, and the rain and the different seasons and, and different things like that. And this, and this is the same thing that the Israelites were starting to do. They were starting to, to what, or had been doing, they were worshiping uh, idols of other, other religions. It's, it just felt like they had to worship something more than just one God. But God had been very particular about that, telling them not to worship any other gods, that he was their one and only God. And they could not grasp that. And so he allowed them to go again uh, in, into uh, being treated as slaves and oppressed. But the, again, it was eight years. I, and I know one year, one day is probably too much, but it was a short time for them before God tried to rescue them out of there again. And he reminded them, I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you've not listened to me. 
You know, it, it sounds like he's like like if uh, you've dealt with children before, you've scolded me. I've told you not to do that. Haven't I told you not to go in there? Or I've not told you not to do that? And then there's some type of consequence that comes from disobedience. And the disobedience they had was that they were going to be oppressed by the Midianites. And since the Lord had demonstrated his power in forming and settling Israel as a nation, it made no sense to worship other gods. But for the but for the ancient people's worship was less about matters of uh, personal of uh, pro and con arguments than it was about not having any gods accidentally unworship. They, 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 they felt like, well, you know, maybe I, I know we're supposed to worship the one God, but what if we just do do this for just just to make sure that we're doing the right thing? Uh, let's worship this God. Let's let's make sure that we let's, we we worship this God so that uh, this God doesn't get angry and and things happen. They just wanted to make sure that they covered all their bases. They were worshiping. Uh, <laughs> uh, they were worshiping with other gods. But again, God had told them that's one of the main things they were not to do. And then the angel of the Lord came and sat down on their oak and Ophir, oak tree. Now the oak tree, the large tree, uh, whether it's, uh, it was, was very good because sometimes those big trees, wherever they were, uh, people would sit down and c converse because it got them out of the heat of the day it was, it made great shade. And so sitting down and talking uh, was, some, was something that was normally done then. And so the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the tree. I guess even the, the angel of the Lord was hot too. And the tree, and that belonged to Josh, the Josias of Abarite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in the wine spread to keep it from the Midianites. Now, you usually did the threshing of the wheat out in the open where the wind could help separate the chaff from the wheat and then the... And the uh, <clears throat> The wine press was used for something totally different. And if he was harvesting the wheat, it was probably in, in the springtime or June or something like that. And, and the grapes are for the wine press, they wouldn't have been ripe until the uh, the fall, like, like around August or whatever. The savan is uh, when 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 they were doing he was doing this, and he was doing it to hide it from. Uh, the Midianites, because they may have seen him doing it and taken uh, the product from him because, again, they didn't want him to have anything. They want all control, and he was basically hiding and working in the same, at the same time. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The heavenly messenger greeted Gideon not on the basis of his past achievements, but as a foreshadowing of what he was to become, a mighty warrior. Now, the only, the only other place the heavenly messenger uttered a phrase like this unconditionally was in Luke uh, when he was talking to Mary. The longer conditional use of the phrase is found in 2 Chronicles. The entire, the entire phrase, 2 Chronicles 15 and 2, it says, the Lord is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. So the angel of the Lord basically came in to tell Gideon that the Lord is with him, but he's got to be with the Lord. Know the times of troubles are difficult. Uh, I know they're not good, but, 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 but God is now with you. And God wants you to be that great warrior for your people. And Gideon had a hard time believing it. Because next time, the next statement that uh, Gideon makes back to him, he says, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us unto the hand of the Midian. Can you think of a time when you felt that you, you, you were alone, that there, there was no, not even God with you, that you'd reached that point? And I say, 
Many people have done that. And Gideon was no different. He wasn't being rude. Uh, he wasn't protesting him. He just wanted to make, he just didn't understand is if God is the same God that he heard about, then why are we here? Because these people are oppressing us like they did our ancestors in Egypt. And he, he brought them out. He got them from under the thumb of the, of, of the Egyptians. And he just wanted, wanted to know. But people, like, people do the same thing now. Uh, they, they question, is God really there with me? And many times, the situation that we've gotten ourselves into, where it does look bleak, is our fault. It wasn't a God uh, not being with us. It's that he was with us, yet we still did not do what he asked us to do. Or we don't know, we did not do what we know he wants us to do. And it goes on, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? You know, the reference to the strength you have seems strange, but the so-called strength, what so-called strength did Gideon have? His main strength was that God was with him. The God was with him. But Gideon still wasn't totally bought in. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My claim is of the weakest of Manasseh, and I'm the least of my family. You know, it sounds like Moses, when, when, when God told, told him to go and uh, set his people free, that, you know, I, who, who is he to go and do that? And, 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 and the same thing was replied to Gideon. I, th I thought this unit ended on good because everyone needs to know that. He tells him, the Lord answers, I will be with you. It, 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 if you can con con conceive and understand that and believe that in all that you do and all that you say and wherever you go and however you go, that God is with you. You've got to trust God, as they say. You've got to trust him when you don't see him. And this is what Gideon was going through. He didn't see him. He didn't see his work, God's works. So it was for hard for him to trust in him and to believe what the, the angel of the Lord was telling him. But in, but in the end, if you continue reading on in the book of it, Gideon does do what he's supposed to do. He's a little stiff-necked about it. But his belief that God is who he said he is gave him the strength to do what he needed to do. And that applies to us now. It applied to Gideon back then. That God is still who he says he is. In our weakest parts of our lives, when we don't feel like it, that when we can't see him and we, and we, we can't see any evidence of him, we have to trust that God is still there. We have to trust that what God told us is, is, is for us. If you've prayed and God has given you an answer, that's your answer. Whether you like it or not, that's your answer. And still trust that even in those bad situations, God is still the same. He didn't say, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to disappear from your life from right now. God's still there. And everybody that's hearing this this morning will, will, will say that it's been a time in their lives when they felt just like Gideon. That God is not in their life. That they've done the things they're supposed to do, but they don't see God in their lives. I have no answer for that. All just to tell you that God is still there. He is who he says he is. And as he ended up, the union says, uh, I will be with you. And I'll let you know that God will be with you if you are with God. If you forsake him, he will forsake you. Second Chronicles is a strong, is a strong reference for us to fall back on to. Just when we think, uh, we get to thinking that we don't know What's going on? The Lord is with you when you're with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. But you got to seek him. You can't find him if you don't look for him. He doesn't just come up and tap you on the shoulder. You got to go looking for God. God's not going to come looking for you. 
He's got to be where he's supposed to be because there's many people that there, there's many people looking for God. So he has to be in a place where everybody can find him. And I encourage you, if you've not found God in your life, if you've not allowed him to be the leader of your life, if you've not asked for forgiveness of your life, that this is the time and any time to do that. Because God is and God will make a way for you, even in your darkest days. I hope you understand and, and, and enjoy uh, and learn from this lesson today that Gideon had the same doubts that back then that people have now. And God has allowed people and things to oppress those children of his, but he didn't desert them. He delivered them. Gideon probably, Gideon probably had the right to, to feel that God had left him. But they had gotten their own selves in that position. And he was part of that suffering. So, God bless you for tuning in today. And I pray that God's with you and your day is good. Thank you.